An ancient shaman is singing and chanting. He is praying to fill the pulse of Mother Earth, the rhythm of her breath so that he can utilize them in healing and rejuvenating the members of his tribe. His chants survived till date because somebody carved them on a stone that we found and put in a museum. But when the modern man reads these chants, he thinks that stupid savages who did not understand science were imagining things like the pulse of the earth or the rhythm of her breath, simply because they were too dumb to see the most obvious that inanimate objects don't have such qualities. In this video, I'm gonna review the latest discoveries made by the team of Alexander Kultepin in the field of um, reverse engineering the ancient techniques of um, vibroacoustics and after that I'm gonna let you make your own conclusions about who was the dumb one. Was it really the ancient shaman who knew about these uh, magical sound waves without the need of trashing the planet under the banner of scientific progress and utilize them for the good cause of healing and rejuvenating his people? Or are we the dumb ones who have spent millions on finding out about these waves in our high-tech laboratories and at the end we can't even get ourselves together to tell about it to our children in school what to speak of utilizing them for healing and rejuvenating. <laughs> Schumann's Resonance This is the modern, commonly used name for the electromagnetic standing waves in the atmosphere. It is found within the cavity formed by the Earth's surface and the ionosphere. Countless experiments have proven beyond a doubt that this resonance plays a vital role in maintaining a healthy, functioning human body. They directly influence the most vital processes going on inside our bodies. But most importantly, this resonance is practically identical with the alpha and beta brain waves of our bodies. In other words, we are designed in such a way to resonate with the pulse of the planet in the most direct and literal sense. Unfortunately, all kinds of modern equipment and gadgets emit vast variety of artificial sound and electromagnetic waves which distort this natural pulse of the earth. In a typical city environment, the Schumann's resonance doesn't even exist anymore. The researchers need to go in open sea or, for example, underground to be able to detect those waves again. Needless to say, the results of this type of pollution are chronic fatigue and chronic stress. One's ability to cope with sickness reduces drastically. Because our body is designed in such a way that when it hears the breath, the rhythm of Mother Earth telling it to heal, it does so because it is connected to its mother. The artificial and harmful unnatural new waves affect not only we humans but also the wildlife. It affects the plants, the animals, everything. That is why modern devices have been developed which emit Schumann's resonance 
and many ailments are successfully being cured using this technique, which is actually a very ancient one. Using those very same frequencies of the Schumann resonance has always been part of the traditional medicines, for example, of China and India, for sure, although the exact techniques using to create such a wavelength is somewhat different than the modern technical devices producing such wavelengths. So, first of all, they produced the resonance in a more environmentally friendly way. The second difference is that uh, the common people were much more aware of how such techniques function and were educated how to use them themselves at home. And third, obviously this type of healing was far more readily accessible than nowadays when your regular doctor forced on you by your compulsory insurance probably, he will send you to such type of treatment only if you are very lucky actually. And here is when the most interesting part starts. Since years Alexander Kotepin has been studying the vast network of underground dwellings found on almost all continents. Although the age of these uh, complexes, which are primarily found in Asia, but also all over Europe, South and North America, is very hard to determine due to its extreme antiquity, but still at places they are overlapped on the top by layers which, according to current mainstream geology, date millions and in some cases many millions of years ago. Overlapping means that uh, at uh, certain locations extremely ancient uh, geological layers are wrapped around the building, they follow their shape. It's not possible that um, these underground dwellings have been carved afterwards because the upper layer fills up uh, certain cavities in them or simply wraps around their structures. So while conducting an extensive research of these underground structures for years, primarily of those in um, Turkey, Israel and Bulgaria, Alexander Kultepin started noticing the vibroacoustic properties of certain chambers and especially the large dome-shaped ones or Also, we could say bell-shaped chambers. Beit Gervin in Israel is the perfect example for that. It's got those numerous pyramid-shaped holes all around. Officially, these are dwelling places for pigeons. But uh, when visiting the site, one quickly finds out that pigeons simply don't like them because they are too small for them. There are so many pigeons in the region, but they never nest here. While on the other hand, the acoustic properties of the chambers with uh, such uh, tiny pyramids carved on their walls are amazing. Till date, they conduct operas in the Bained Garden because of the magical acoustics effects. And amazingly enough, the frequencies of the resonances that are being formed in these uh, chambers definitely show correlation to the Schumann resonance frequencies. Yet similar but somewhat uh, different cavities, again um, observed in this uh, worldwide network of um, underground cities, are the so-called beehive stones primarily observed in uh, Hungary, but also in other locations in uh, Bulgaria, Israel, Turkey, and many others. Again, beehive doesn't mean that in reality they have anything to do with bees. Indeed, I don't see any of the local bees nesting over here. So these type of cavities seem to somehow diminish or modify the sound frequencies. For example, this particular site in Bulgaria. It is even called the deaf stones because these cavities seem to kind of 
swallow up the sound, or at least that's how it appears to our ears. So in other words, the cavities on the sides of these halls, or chambers, in many cases we just see ruins of their walls, these could have been some kind of regulators, or they could have been used for tuning the required frequency. Often men hears a kind of long, upright standing stone can still be found in the center of such chambers. It is quite possible they were used for tuning the frequency. And this um, new research basically suggests that uh, all these bell shaped um, holes could be kind of instruments for the residents of these cities to maintain optimal health while they were forced to live underground, probably due to unfavorable conditions on the surface of the earth at a particular period of history. And if people in the past were hiding underground to escape problems on the surface and were somehow maintaining healthy life in those dark conditions, somewhat unnatural, maybe the same techniques, if we manage to reverse engineer them now, maybe they could uh, help us stay tuned to the pulse and breath of Mother Earth, although the world around is unfortunately abundant with malevolent frequencies of all kinds of sound wave and resonances of all type and description which give wrong signals to our bodies, signals that are not conductive to healing, harmony, peace and happiness. pyramids all over the world that are built as if following the same plan, although they are situated on different continents. Most explorers agree that they are some sort of technical setup, but what exactly, what kind of setup? According to studies done by Yashkardin, the Great Pyramid in Giza, for example, is uh, capable of emitting powerful infrasound frequencies of a very wide spectrum, depending how is it tuned. And it is not beyond the realm of reality that this worldwide network of pyramids is actually a global network of powerful infrasound generators. Subsequently, those sound vibrations could be locally captured by other megalithic structures. Officially, these pyramids are being classified by default as burial sites, but this does not mean this was their original purpose. Actually, in very few of them are true burials found. And even when they are, there is no guarantee that this is not a secondary use of the given historic site. And all these sites usually would have architectural elements that could have served the purpose of uh, tuning the frequency for a particular purpose. In the case of the round structures, it is the wells that could serve as such regulators. In the case of the dolmens, which by the way are found by thousands of uniform design almost on all continents, even at very remote places like uh, isolated islands in the oceans, they still have this standard design. And in their case, the frequency could be regulated by this special stone that was inserted in the round opening of the dolmen. By adjusting how much of the stone is inserted in the dolmen, the frequency of the sound that resonates inside changes. This is how these closing stones look like. Zigzag designs closely resembling the graphic depiction of sound waves are found on various dolmens on different continents. Is this all by chance? For example, the Great Pyramid of Cholula has a vast network of um, underground 
tunnels below. Government sponsored test of the vibroacoustic properties of these tunnels was carried out, but the results were never published. Instead of that, they are publishing in the official history books that these tunnels were made by the archaeologists in very recent years, while in reality, the sheer amount, the sheer length of these tunnels makes their recent origin highly unlikely by itself. On the top of that, when properly studied, it came out that they were structural parts of the original pyramid and not hastily done addition done by archaeologists recently. In other words, whether all these smaller megalithic structures captured waves sent out by the pyramids or not, regardless of that, in any case, they could have surely served as setups for intensifying the favorable infrasound waves, the pulse of Mother Earth that heals and rejuvenates. Many of the megalithic ancient ephedases are tuned in such a way that in, they intensify those particular frequencies which promote in one's mind, in the human mind, the feelings of compassion, satisfaction, happiness, and tend to awaken in everybody what is nowadays classified as special psychic abilities. Maybe they were not so special and exceptional in those times. And most importantly, all this picture fits perfectly well with the legends, the only remnants of our true history. How many times we have heard about the magicians who made it all happen with special mantras, or, if you prefer it to call it, magical spells or magical words nowadays, with the help of sound. At the end, it boils down to the very same thing. Accomplishing tasks which tend to be miraculous for us. The countless so-called rock cut burial tombs also caught the attention of Alexander Kaltepin. Why are they associated with burials to start with? After all, there are no dead people found in them. Or were some of them indeed ceremonial healing tubs where one would be placed with or without special liquid and again, with the help of sound frequency, as usual, the magical words or mantras, one would get rejuvenated. This is what this historic depiction from Ireland shows. Performing a healing and rejuvenating therapy on somebody by dipping him in what nowadays is automatically classified as burial sarcophagus. There is no doubt that many of sarcophaguses were made specifically for burial purposes. But this does not imply in any way that any ancient bathtub was a sarcophagus of some sort for dead people exclusively. The team that embarked on this uh, uneasy task of reverse engineering the ancient techniques of healing and rejuvenation using sound consists of um, a geologist, that is Alexander Kaltepin himself, an archaeologist, a physicist, a radio engineer specializing in frequencies, acoustics engineer, specialist in stonemasonry techniques, specialist in bioinformation technologies, and sound therapies, a neurophysiologist specializing in brain studies, and a maker of special flat bells that are tuned with the Schumann's resonances. This video is just an introduction to this vast topic, and I'm planning to make a full-length interview, probably even with the full team of researchers, to find out more about this project 
And if you're a person with lots of spare money and you're interested in real rejuvenation, you may consider a sponsorship because waiting for official academic institutions to sponsor or even implement on large scale this type of techniques or technologies may not prove extremely fruitful because if they had any intention to keep you healthy and not to speak about rejuvenating you back even, they wouldn't be actively building all those devices that distort these human resonances to start with. 